We're live once again from the PDAC and we have the boss of tech, Don Lindsay, one of our regulars at the show. You and I were trying to remember. We've been doing this for a while, Andy. We've been doing, we can't even remember how many years, yeah. or I'm having trouble anyway. Always great fun. It's great to have you here. Give us an update on China. We keep getting these weak-ish, anyway, factory numbers out of China. Is that affecting your copper and your met coal business? Uh, well, not at this stage. We're still seeing strong customer demand out of China. W one of the things that I point out to some people is that the amount of uh, our volumes going to China has been reduced over the years. So in our steelmaking coal business, it's less than 10% of our production now. So we really haven't been affected by any uh, potential slowdowns in China. But, and that's been taken up by India. India has been so strong that our, our, our volumes to India have increased by a factor of 10 over the last five years, and we could double again in the next two years if we wanted to. So you said China's only about 10% oh, of your met coal now. cells now. Yeah, yeah. That's not widely known, I don't think. No, I thought it has transitioned from five years ago, it would have been 35%, but we took a deliberate strategic decision to reduce our exposure to China. We, we all, all of us in the industry are exposed to Chinese price risk because they're the incremental buyer of everything, but we didn't want to have that same commercial risk, so uh, less volume to China. And India is a rising power yeah. industrially. Certainly is. I mean, their infrastructure needs are, are great and, and they're making those investments. So. Now coal still, according to you guys, the biggest contributor to profit this year, more than half it of your It is a earnings. fabulous business. It's one of the best mining businesses in the world. Uh, we are growing our copper business, of course. We've sanctioned the QB2 project, which over time will then become QB3. And we see the copper business eventually, uh, with the combination of those two projects, being equal to or, or greater than the coal business. But it's been a transformational year for tech. Uh, 2018 was, uh, you know, we had record revenues of $12.6 billion, record EBITDA of over $6 billion, record earnings of 3.1 billion. We reduced debt by 1.4 billion. We got investment grade You're from, back from investment Moody's grade, and yeah. Fitch. And, uh, and you know, we've sanctioned QB2. We have a great partner in Sumitomo Metal Mining and Sumitomo Corp. That's underway. So uh, I think the company's in the strongest position it's ever been. So this QB2, there's enough copper there to last for 100 years? Yes, it's a, a very long life. And so that likely means that it will be expanded into QB3 and then some. But the really notable feature of QB2, it has this unusually low strip ratio. First five years is 0.44 tons of waste for every ton of ore that you mine, and life of mine is 0.7. And that compares to some of the great mines of the world. Antimino, for example, which we have a, a piece of, yeah. it's at 3.5 to one. So when you only have to move like one fifth of the rock that Antimino does, that's a structural advantage and it's through the life of mine. So it's, it's really going to be a, a, an advantage for its cost structure. Now you struck this partnership on QB2 that reduces the amount of capital you actually have to put in. That, Can, that's right. Tell us how that works. It makes a huge difference because they're doing an earn-in where they're going to put up the next $1.2 billion uh, US uh, when the deal closes, which we expect it will actually close this month. And then on, on top of that, we have a project financing of two and a half billion dollars so that for tech, we don't have to put up any capital once the deal closes, right through till probably the end of 2020 or maybe even into 2021. And even then, it's only 693 million US, and of course we have more than that on our balance sheet now. So it reduces the obligations and it gives us the ability to return capital to shareholders. We announced uh, in November 570 million of distributions to shareholders, part cash dividend and uh, part buyback, mm -hmm. and uh, we think we'll be adding to that once the QB2 deal closes. So Fort Hills is a relative, the oil sands, that yeah. you, you, a project you own a piece of, relatively small part of your portfolio, That's right. but it created noise in the fourth quarter because of the collapse in Alberta oil prices. It did. Fort Hills, so I got to say, as an asset, Suncor has done an awesome job. Most assets of this scope, you know, $17 billion project, never hit design capacity. Uh, Fort Hills hit design capacity within weeks of when the third train started up in May, and in December it ran at 104% of design capacity. So this is an awesome asset. It ran at 201,000 barrels a day and $23 Canadian cash costs. So we really love the asset. What we need now are pipelines, and I think everybody mm -hmm. in Canada knows about the pipeline issue. And of course in the fourth quarter there was a blowout in what they call differentials that went up to yeah. normally in the $10 to $15 range went as high as $50 or more. Uh, and Alberta took action, which did make a difference, and, and now Western Canada Select is now trading in the low to mid 40s, which, you know, that means that our, our, our assets now cash neutral to cash positive, and then uh, we'll see how the world evolves from here. But basically, we'd like to see the pipelines get built. So how many shares are you thinking about buying over the next year, buying back? Uh, well, we announced a $400 million uh, buyback. Uh, so far, we've executed on about 260 million of that. 
And then um, the board has said that once the QB2 deal closes, we'll look at adding to that. It's a board decision, but I suspect that uh, we'll add enough that we can buy back all year long. Got to get your take on Mark Bristow and Newmont. Uh, do you think he'll guess, will he get Newmont to this current bid? Well, I have to say, I think like everybody else around the PDAC, we're, we're enjoying the show and uh, you know, we're going to get my bag of popcorn, sit back and, <laughs> and watch the fireworks. But uh, you know, I, really, I, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. I've seen this before. Some, some people are after bigness and some people are after returns. They're going to put their track records in front of shareholders and the shareholders will decide. So uh, I wish them both luck and see how it goes. From tech's point of view, we're sitting on record earnings, uh, strong balance sheet, great growth pipeline, uh, you know, really in as great position as we've ever been, so we're excited about that. Um, you would only get into gold if you had something that would last you decades, and a gold deposit yeah. like that's hard to find. And that's the thing, that just geologically, most gold mines are relatively short life compared to what we're used to. We have like 100 year resources and 50 year resources, you know, long, long life that where you're going to capture several cycles. You know, in this business, whether it's copper or zinc or oil or coal, like you tend to get all your capital back in two or three good years. If you have a long life, you can have those two or three year, good years five or six times. Then if you back calculate your IRR, you found out you did very well, but you've got to have that long life. That's tough to find in gold. Looks like the stock though still out of favor. Well, this is from mid-February from CIBC. They reckon you were trading at a 41% discount to diversified mining peers when you look at price and net asset value. So this is your opportunity okay. if you want to get in there now. It's a great, great value. Obviously, it's going to have tremendous uh, you know, returns from the point of view of returning capital to shareholders and, and buying back stock and cash dividends and growth ahead. So all these things normalize eventually, so I think it's a good time to get in. Why, why would the stock be under a cloud, do you think? Well, one of the things, uh, historically, people have a fear of coal price volatility, and there, it was indeed volatile in mm -hmm. that period coming out of the, uh, the long downturn, five-year downturn, when there were all these bankruptcies in the U.S. But we've seen that stabilize now for eight quarters in a row. The average coal price is actually, in inflation just terms, $197, <coughs> excuse me, over the last 10 years, and right now it's 215 you know, um, these aren't high prices, they're actually close to average. High price would be over $300 where it's been four times. So we think over time people will get used to this is where the average prices are, mm -hmm. redo their numbers and find that we're really good value. Speaking of coal, you're reminding me, you do have this nagging, <coughs> uh, this nagging selenium pollution problem uh, in BC from the big mines. And apparently it's even caused some cross-border friction. Some American representatives on a joint board <coughs> were frustrated that the Canadians weren't releasing all the information they wanted. This <coughs> selenium thing seems to be a stubborn problem. Well, the key is to find the solution, and we think we've done that with what's called saturated rock fill. We invested 45 million in this technology. It's been proven to be working at high volumes of water for over a year now. We're in discussions with the government and the regulators to get approval to use that. Mm -hmm. And that removes the selenium, removes the nitrates uh, even better than the current water treatment plants that we're building. And it can be done faster and uh, more efficiently. So uh, the key is to have the long-term solution in place and we hope to get approval from the regulators to, to be doing that shortly. But this saturated rock fell, I'm seeing it could cost you a billion dollars or more, capital cost to put well, in. Well actually, there you're referring to the water treatment plants okay. that, uh, that we had announced earlier. If we go that route, uh, we've announced that it would be in that order of magnitude over a five year period. And then as, a, <coughs> as you go longer, there would be more. This one actually is only 20% of that capital okay. cost, so it's a significant savings. So you, so you, <coughs> I'm sorry, me. I know you, you, yeah. you got a tickle oh, in no. your yeah. throat, but yeah. um, the SRF, the saturated rock fill, you're hoping that the regulators will approve That's that. Right. That's right. John, always great talking to you, thanks very much. Thank you so much, nice to see you, Andy. Don Lindsay, the boss of Tech,